Welcome, welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Today... Today uh, is the Michigan primary for both the Democrats and the Republicans, right? Yep. Yeah, so uh, before... We tape this uh, around 6 o'clock before the polls close, so we don't know the results. Nikki Haley, win or lose, keep doing whatever it is you think that is. <laughs> Fascinating to watch. But uh, there is one interesting wrinkle that the pundocracy is watching tonight involving Michigan's large Arab-American population. You see, due to their broad disapproval of how Joe Biden has supported Israel's actions in Gaza, a coalition of Arab-American and Muslim leaders are urging Democrats to vote uncommitted in the primary as a form of protest. And it's very important. This is a peaceful protest. They're angry, but they're not going to do something insane and destructive like vote for Dean Phillips. <laughs> And apparently, the Biden administration is optimistic about a ceasefire deal soon. The odd thing is how we found out about it. Last night, Biden appeared on Late Night with Seth Meyers. And I, for one, am so happy for my dear friend Seth that he had the president on his show. Even though we have invited him here to the Ed Sullivan Theater. <laughs> and I do not... Is he over there? I don't see him. He's not here, and he's not with you. Uh, keep looking, you know? Maybe he's lost. He is so very, very old. <laughs> see what you made me do, Joe? You see? Hurt people hurt people. <laughs> anyway, so the president not only sat down for an interview with my former friend Seth, but <laughs> they went out to an ice cream shop where a reporter asked the president this. Can you give us a sense of when you think that ceasefire will start, sir? Well, I hope by the, the beginning of the weekend. I mean, the end of the weekend. At least my, my, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. It's not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday, we'll have a ceasefire. As a very statesmanlike response <laughs> and a reason to kindle hope if he hadn't said it directly into a scoop of mint chip. <laughs> it's time to bring peace to a region that has known far too much Tragedy. <laughs> of course, uh, diplomacy has always gone great with dessert. Even at the Yalta conference, they had a chocolate fountain. <laughs> what I love most about this is how awkward this moment is for Seth Meyers. <laughs> <laughs> Just, mwah. Oh, fantastic. Is that great? I feel ya. I feel ya, Seth. This is why you have to be careful about inviting reporters to watch you film with your guests. You don't want to answer serious questions during a goofy segment. That's why Seinfeld stopped doing comedians in cars discussing Afghanistan. <laughs> now, here in New York... Is this also in New York? This is also in New York. Here in New York, Trump has way bigger problems than ice cream cones. He, he's, he's got about 30 days to raise nearly half a billion dollars to pay his fraud judgments. But there's a more immediate threat because a jury also ordered him to pay $83.3 million for defaming E. Jean Carroll and in order to stop her from collecting immediately. Trump has to post 110% of the amount in a cash bond of $91 million by March 9th. You know the old saying, March comes in like a lion and goes out like a bankrupt sexual predator. <laughs> hey, Trump's team... Trump's team... <laughs> Trump's team is... Uh, he's tried some unusual legal maneuvering to postpone him having to cough up the cash. For instance, they said that he shouldn't have to pay because the judgment was likely to be overturned due to the fact that their client's behavior was not uniquely egregious. You can't get away with a crime just because it wasn't unique. <laughs> you never hear a jury say, we find the defendant derivative. <laughs> really? A victim's head in a box? Please, is it 1995? Boring! <laughs> but their craziest argument is that Trump shouldn't have to post a bond at all because he's too rich. <laughs> you can't argue with that logic. Also, also, Your Honor, I shouldn't have to go to jail because I'm too guilty. 
I just, I don't think. People are noticing, by the way. People are noticing. Uh, spoiler alert, the judge said no to both arguments after he stopped laughing. <laughs> uh, speaking of Trump's crimes, uh, we're learning more about former Trump attorney and defendant who just sent a cocktail to the stenographer. <laughs> Kenneth Cheesebro. Uh, Cheesebro is the mastermind of the fake elector scheme to overthrow the 2020 election. But last year, Cheesebro pleaded guilty in Georgia and has been cooperating with Michigan and Wisconsin investigators in hopes of avoiding more criminal charges. But it turns out Cheesebro might not escape the cheese grater of justice. Because <laughs> CNN found out that Cheesebro had a secret Twitter account. And that's bad news for him, since while he was under oath, he told prosecutors this. Do you have any social media presence? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, no, Twitter? No, I, I mean, uh, no. Uh, I, I, for whatever, I mean, before... Any uh, uh, yeah. uh, alternate IDs that you're using for that kind of stuff? No, I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't do any tweeting. That is the sound of someone desperately trying to remove the Twitter app from their phone under the desk. <laughs> Uh, Twitter, no, I, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, really, I'm a hamana, hamana, hamana. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't have no damn face ID not recognized. Um, uh, uh, Regis, I would like to phone a friend. <laughs> now, Cheese Bro's secret account was called Badger Pundit. No, no, sir. Badger Pundit is not the alias of a Wisconsin-based election denier. Badger Pundit is a new cartoon show I am writing where a badger works at a 24-hour news network for animals that is headquartered in a big tree and is called Tree NN. <laughs> Their rival network is still Fox News, but with actual foxes. <laughs> Call me Paramount Plus. <laughs> is there still Paramount Plus? Yeah. You still have Paramount Plus? Ooh, there's a huge story from when we were on break that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet. The Alabama Supreme Court ruled that frozen embryos are children. Now, this surprised a lot of people and proves beyond a doubt the Republicans do not know what children are. <laughs> you know, kids. Sure, I know kids. You keep them in a vat of liquid nitrogen at negative 320 degrees. That's why they're called children, not warm dren. <laughs> Come on. Think, folks. Now, one of the guys... <laughs> One of the guys behind this decision is a Christian nationalist, Alabama Chief Justice and off-duty Captain Crunch, Tom Parker. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Judge Parker's ruling is disastrous for people trying to have children through IVF because it would force parents to pay for lifelong storage fees of embryos they will never be allowed to discard. So people are going to be desperate for cheap storage spots, okay? If you go to your parents' place, do not open that Christmas tin from the popcorn factory. <laughs> it's your frozen brother. <laughs> Experts say this ruling would, quote, require embryos to remain in cryogenic storage even after the couple who underwent the IVF treatment have died, and potentially even after the couple's children, grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren have died. That's gonna make for some weird family reunions. <laughs> Parker, say hello to your great-great-grand embryo. I don't care if he smells weird. Give him a kiss. <laughs> and and this, is, uh, this Alabama ruling is really just the beginning. As of 2023, fetal personhood bills have been introduced in at least 14 state legislatures, and they've already been enacted in Georgia and Missouri. On the bright side, if you're a pregnant woman driving in Missouri, you can now use the carpool lane <laughs> to drive out of Missouri. Now, Republicans are not going to stop at this. They're not carpool lane. <laughs> People love carpool lane jokes. Republicans are not going to stop at IVF. The next thing on their agenda is birth control. Right after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, Democrats in Congress introduced a bill aimed to ensure access to contraception nationwide, and 195 House Republicans immediately voted against it. You see, religious conservatives approve only the type of sex depicted in the Bible. One man, two of his daughters, and a pillar of salt that likes to watch. <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Josh Brolin. But when we come back, meanwhile, join us, won't you?